the media and journalism have never been perfect. But in recent years, quality and objectivity have taken a nosedive. The majority of outlets have shifted from impartial seekers of truth to partisan propaganda. TV news is no longer interested in telling us what's happened. It focuses squarely on telling us what to think. In America, both Fox News and CNN are notoriously bad. But at least viewers get a choice. In Britain, they all sing from the same song sheet, whether it's the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5 or Sky News. They're all pushing the same lukewarm agenda of woke identity politics, championed by the radical left. And considering that this same worldview dominates Hollywood, virtually all TV drama, the education profession, advertising, professional sport, the internet giants of Twitter, Google, Wikipedia, Facebook and YouTube, the comedy, theatrical and popular music circuits, and even the corporate world, it can feel like we've been swamped with snivelling, and wildly distorted views of our contemporary world. So one of the true heavyweights of recent journalistic vintage, a man of serious integrity and ability, has declared a challenge to this virtual monopoly. Andrew Neil used to be one of the rare, impartial voices on the BBC, but he was criminally underused there, before eventually being driven from the corporation. And now... He's announced that he's setting up GB News to challenge the ever more pervasive woke consensus that bombards us from all directions. And boy, did left-wing Twitter go mad. The channel hasn't even aired yet, so no one's actually seen it. But that didn't make any difference at all to their certainty that GB News would effectively be Fox News for the UK. A ludicrous suggestion to anyone who's actually seen Andrew Neil's work. And so, Andrew Neil was compared to the Nazis, was called racist and misogynistic, was described as being on the hard right, just like the BBC, apparently. Well, I guess some people are so barkingly left-wing that everyone else looks like they're on the hard right. Neil was called a fascist, compared to the Ku Klux Klan, lumped in with the far-right, Tories and racists, a man who advances extreme right-wing hate. Uh, he was described as approving of racism, xenophobia and anything said by far-right fucknuggets. He was called a fascist again before the classic denouement. Yes, Andrew Neil is literally Hitler. Neil had gone public to argue that the original definition of woke is out of date. As a concern for social justice, nobody could object. But it has morphed into a cancel culture that seeks not just to disagree, but to close down ideas and people with which it disagrees. Insidious. In this view, he is entirely correct. Yet left-wing Twitter attempted to claim that he's completely wrong, even while making overt attempts to cancel Neil and his channel. They are clear that they want him to F off. Alice BLM Rainbow was adamant on how the likes of Neil can be cancelled and silenced if they work really hard. Pete Meacham would love to live in a world where there was no Andrew Neil. Others prayed for his cancellation. Because this is the essence of the modern left. If they don't like Andrew Neil or the prospect of GB News, fine. Don't watch it. But that simply isn't enough. They have to do everything they can to get it shut down, to prevent anyone else from watching it either. And this campaign is led by the proto-fascistic Stop Funding Hate. They began one of their typical campaigns, this time aimed at a channel they've never seen, a channel that has never even aired and a man who is as far removed from a hate monger as it's possible to be. 
They claim that if you want to help stop Fox News style TV in Britain, tweet your mobile phone company with the hashtag don't fund GB News. Urge them not to advertise with GB News or any Fox News style channel and explain why this matters to you. They also declare that they'll share out info about GB News advertisers as soon as they have it. But they intend to head this off by contacting as many companies as they can in advance. They further claim that if enough people speak out and urge their bank, mobile phone provider and supermarket not to fund GB News, it could really make a difference. It's quite chilling stuff. And let's be clear about this. They want to stop this channel happening in Britain. This is a focused attempt to use a widespread campaign of bullying to drive them out of business. It's a concerted and clearly stated attack on free speech. Their stated aim is to make what they call toxic media unprofitable, to drive them out of business. So when those who have signed up to this campaign claim they are not attacking freedom of speech, they are simply lying. And a lot of people have signed up to this campaign. Their supporters have written to Boots, Tesco, Sainsbury's, BT, First Direct, Lloyd's, Three, Halifax and Santander. I came across hundreds of these posts, and there were almost certainly thousands more scattered across the internet. Many others expressed their support, their hope that they could drive Neil into oblivion. And there was celebrity sport for this totalitarian, fascistic attempt to ban a news source they had never even seen. Rufus Hound declared that he would absolutely boycott any company who advertised on GB News. And he urged other people to virtue signal the same. Jolion Morn also joined in. He's the famous QC who, if you'll remember, beat a fox to death with a baseball bat before bragging about the deed on the internet. Perhaps he confused the animal with Fox News and was consumed with a fit of rage. Anyway, the boastful animal murderer sure feels qualified in lecturing the rest of us on our morality. And he was also clear that this was a concerted attempt to drive GB News from business. That this is a channel purely for the hard right. And that if mainstream advertisers want to associate with their agenda, then it's pretty clear that they'll be boycotted. Morn went on to claim that Andrew Neil's gleeful attacks on the woke seek to position GB News as the scourge of those tackling structural disadvantage. Brands will need to ask themselves... Do we want to identify with this political positioning? I doubt the answer is yes. Well, Joylan, I'd say he's probably more the scourge of those who gleefully attack helpless animals with a baseball bat. But whatever. Anyway, the most enthusiastic of all who leapt on this bandwagon was arguably the most annoying man on the internet. Femi. He leapt up to say that he would switch service provider from E immediately if he heard about any e-advert placed on that channel. And he did it by linking to Stop Funding Hate's campaign. You know, the one that makes it clear that they want to stop this news channel, to drive it from the airwaves. Yet to the adult mind of this prattler of endless platitudes, this somehow isn't censorship. Both he and Natasha Devon Rainbow argued that they're simply taking their money elsewhere, withdrawing their custom. It's nothing to do with free speech. Well, let me try and explain the difference to these twerps. If I elect not to buy The Guardian, that's me taking my money elsewhere. But if I attempt to drive The Guardian out of business, then that's censorship. That's an overt attack on other people's freedom of speech. And that's me advertising the fact that only media I agree with should be allowed to exist. This really isn't complicated. But then, this is Femi, who also argues that he doesn't want us to divide, doesn't want us to politically separate, when he's the guy who causes huge division on Brexit, 
COVID, GB news and every other topic under the sun. The same man who talks to and about anyone who disagrees with him like they're pond scum. No, you don't want to promote division, do you? This is the man who claims a news channel he's never seen will promote lies, bigotry and the worst death toll on earth. Plus Brexit, obviously. Can't shut up about that one. This is a man who castigates all his political opponents as bigots and elites and who also assumes any statistical anomalies are absolute proof of discrimination. So not a great thinker or analyst then. This is a man who equates GB News with people who stormed the Capitol, planted bombs and waved Nazi flags in Charlottesville as they murdered Heather Heyer. A man who claims Fox News led directly to a Nazi running over a woman and bombs in government, while suggesting that GB News will result in more MPs being killed and journalists attacked. This is a man who actually compared Andrew Neil to Jimmy Savile, Rolf Harris and Harold Shipman. But no, you don't want to see any division, do you, Femi? You don't want us to politically separate... That's why you directly compared the news channel of one of our most balanced and respected journalists to a load of Nazis. And then he complains about being accused of hypocrisy. Well, you've almost got to admire that kind of chutzpah. So yes, Femi, it is you and your cohort who don't respect media balance. Seriously. You want to continue spouting your divisive, hate-filled alarmist rhetoric while silencing far more authoritative and moderate voices like Andrew Neil. And I know you can't see that you've fallen on the irrational, hysterical side of the fence, but you have. I don't want to silence you though, and I won't be attempting to bully your sponsors or cripple your income. Femi also suggested that he'll avoid appearing on GBTV out of principle. <laughs> right. We know you'll run a mile in fear because Andrew Neil's such a superior journalist to you and he'd skewer and humiliate you. But keep telling yourself that you're proven a point. Femi also claims it's laughable for Neil to complain about cancel culture. <laughs> yeah, almost as laughable as a successful black man with a huge social media presence who's always on the telly repeatedly whining about racism. Right? Anyway, the real upshot of this is that those who want to drive adverts off GBTV have given it an incredible boost of free advertising. There's now a real buzz about this channel that just wasn't there before. I'll certainly be tuning in. So thanks, Femi. It looks like you might have saved Andrew Neil and driven another nail into the coffin of woke media. Good show, old bean. Whether they succeed in destroying Neil remains to be seen. But the woke mafia swiftly claimed another victim anyway. The actress and MMA fighter Gino Carano had spoken out about the persecution of Republicans. So her critics, who scoffed at her suggestion, and who deny that cancel culture exists, promptly proved her right by getting her sacked and cast out from Hollywood as a social pariah. It's a good job they don't allow abuse and hate speech on Twitter anymore, right? They really are the living reincarnation of a pitchfork-wielding medieval mob, desperate to burn the witch. Carano had noticed similarities between our contemporary cult of maniacs and embryonic Nazism. Well, from 1933 to 37, the Nazis had cast the Jews out of jobs and made them social pariahs. The Twitter mob laughed at this and then did exactly the same thing. Carano had also made clear just how much she opposed the Nazis too. So they called her a fascist and an anti-Semite. Carano had put up a jokey riposte to the fatuous pronouns craze on her Twitter page. So they branded her a transphobe. This is what they do. They spread outrageous lies about people. They whip up hysterical witch hunts. They destroy people's lives and they remain assured of their unimpeachable virtue and elevated acumen. This mindset is a derangement. 
an increasing danger to societal cohesion. And yet nearly everyone still trembles before and surrenders to the frenzied mob. Free expression and civil discourse are increasingly giving way to hostile suspicion and abusive intolerance. The same battle lines are drawn across the cultural, political and social arenas. There's virtually no escape from the new tyranny. Unless you adhere to the totalitarian party line, you will be driven from culture. It's a truly horrifying development. And if people continue to get away with the sort of dehumanising persecution they're rolling out now, then they will be emboldened. They will push the envelope further. And it will continue to get worse. The prima ballerina, Maya Prusetskaya, gave a damning indictment of life in Russia under the Soviets. And it's one that's increasingly applicable to life in the developed West. She said... I don't want to be a slave. I don't want people whom I don't know to decide my fate. I don't want a leash on my neck. I don't want a cage, even if it's a platinum one. I don't want to be rejected or branded. I don't want to hide what I'm thinking. I don't want to bow my head. And I won't do it. That's not what I was born for. We need to resist our new cultural stasi, or who knows where this stifling totalitarianism will lead. If you've enjoyed this film, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in these topics, I've written two books which go into them in enormous detail. They're called The Tyranny of the Left, and they're available on the links below. Please feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.